Oasi, Ubim Nadi, Sonke Sitter Sie beim Ansee. Homie, don't worry. Hold up. No more gossip, gossip, getting all skinny. This is not the truth, so stop tuning in. You can't get, can't tell a guy. Come, yeah, it's got a whole new one. Social issues, they're so easily. Giving you the latest news so instantly. Gender we tied up. Keep the channel locked on who's on the inside up. It's it's not it's not it's allowed. Not okay. You can't just come and do that. What a great song. Thank you. Please tell us more about it. Um, yeah, Kimo Africa is one of those songs that I really felt that as an artist I, I wanted to write. Mm -hmm. um, I write from a place of being a young person living in this modern cosmopolitan environment. But really, um, it, it's funny to me, young people resonate so much with the song. And it's one of those laid back ones on mm -hmm. the album. Mm -hmm. But the message is, let's celebrate our cultures. Let's celebrate our languages. Your journey has been one that we can't deny. You know, From the minute you came out, um, you've got songs that I'm sure had the festival, everybody, you know, you have a beautiful way of writing like sing along songs. Songs that is that intentional? Is that how you write? Is that your aim at the end of the day? And trust, when she looks down, you've really got her emotional. <laughs> Just saying. Well, I mean, um, you know, obviously, as an artist um, and as a performer on stage, there's nothing like really connecting with your audience members and people singing along. There's really nothing like that experience yeah. when you're on stage and people know every single word. So there are songs that are 
easy hooks, you know mm. what I mean? And, and that's what we're going for at the yeah. time. It's like, it's got to be easy. It's got to be simple because simple is hard. Yeah. You know, people True. think simple is just, but to get a simple hook that works. Yes. You know? <laughs> but like, and then the songs that are so um, poetic yeah. and, and then you have those fans who really go and, and look for the lyrics because they want to know and what it is you're on about. Exactly so it, I don't plan anything going into the studio. It's very organic. Mm. As you know, got to go with the flow. Got to go with the yeah, flow. 90% yeah. local music and all our SABC radio stations. Hello. This Bump is what I'm talking She's about. Up. Are you richer now? I got to be somewhere. I, I have to go ask somebody <laughs> for money. Like, you know? Yo. I mean, you know. <laughs> it's, it's great. And, we, you know, we've been speaking about it. And there's a big buzz, obviously, in the industry. Um, as patrons in this industry trying to, you know, make a living, yeah. that kind of um, regulation helps us sustain. To, to sustain our artistry, first of all, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and I think it encourages those who want to get into the industry. And it's not and that's very discouraging as an artist. So the only thing you really want is for the support and the love, um, if at all, you know. And for people just talk about them, you know, how yeah, I think at the I mean, end that's, of the day. That's yeah. really what it's about. It's all about the music. Yeah. You know, before it's about being a celebrity or a star, it's about the music. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely thank awesome you. performance. Thank you so much. Thank oh, you. Oh, thank you. All right, well, you do know that you can hit us up on social media using the hashtag Mzanti Insider. That's Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Got the Konamanje. It is time for us to show you what we got in store for you because the show is jam packed. Check it out. I love South Africa, it's so diverse. Um, I love the music that we have. They all tell you that you can't fly. What are you doing in a cockpit? It mm. is a cockpit, not a female pit. Got to a point whereby I had to take a decision of whether to amputate or not. We have managed to double our annual turnover by 400% since 2012. I think that I'm a little bit too much of a feminist and um, it sort of kind of takes the boys away. <laughs> Nigeria, and this was probably one of the best experiences with Pilombaka. I got to eat the food, travel around, see different places, and uh, more importantly, I got to work in the working environment. And Gilasukula Deng, who the working environment, if I put my Rona, whereas Rona is not distracted, it's a little bit conversational, it's a little bit open. The industry is slightly different from how we work, and um, yeah, I struggled a lot with that. Man, you know, it's still my second home. It's the place that I go to at least twice a year to visit. Twice uh, a year? Yeah, shout out to my people from Nigeria. So Niger. you vacay like twice a year? Yeah. Mm. No, actually, it's nice very, very, it's problems. not that expensive. You can save. It's not that expensive to travel across Africa. And it's good as Africans to so rub on other places. Ghana, yo, man, the list is endless of places that I've gotten to see. It's beautiful. Fantastic. Now, that leads us to our next segment. Can imagine we're going to see a young actress who's living in Cape Town. And even though she's originally from Zimbabwe, she's showing us how life is Konala Mzhant. Let's check it out. I am an actress from Zimbabwe living in South Africa. You can caught me here in Cape Town where I'm shooting, uh, well, I'm part of a music video for my lovely, amazing friends. I actually just want to talk about my experience as an artist in South Africa, being a foreigner, right? So anyway, I love that we're in Cape Town because this is where my journey began. I actually studied at UCT I studied film, media, and drama, which was amazing. It was life transforming. The culture, the culture in Cape Town is amazing. It's a beautiful city. It's very inspirational. The beauty itself just kind of makes you want to be creative. I love South Africa. It's so diverse. Um, I love the fact that I can express myself more here. And it's always a little bit difficult at the moment. Uh, there's not a lot of freedom creatively and even resource-wise. It's not, it's not like, you know, booming with resources. So here I get to really, you know, um, explore. Being Zimbabwe, yeah, it has difficult uh, difficulties. I love challenges here and there. But to be honest, I will not lie, I love being here. And I love the fact that um, I get to meet so many people from all over the world here in this country. I can't speak in a lot of languages, or in fact, 
Not at all. I can't speak any South African language. When people ask you whether you're, you know, where you're from, why don't you speak the language? Why can't you do this? Why can't you do that? It's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's rough. <laughs> but I survived. Uh, so I was straight out of university. I, um, I decided for a few years to hustle. In fact, this year has been amazing for me. I finally got into my first job with you. Watch out, you know, uh, for uh, mutual friends. It's going to be on um, SABC One, and this is SABC One. So uh, keep watching. I think later on this year. My name is Tendai Ishichitima. So uh, stay tuned and look out for me. Oh, by the way, you can call me Ten Sugars because I'm sweet like that. Peace out. It is time for us to take a quick ad break. When we do come back, we have a chat with females who are working in male-dominated industries. People think we can't drive, we can't park, we can't reverse, so they're yeah. thinking, if you really think you can fly, you like, yeah. Keep the channel locked on Mzanzi Insider. You know what it is, Mzanzi Insider. in a very male dominated industry you need to join Ele aviation plus banale masiba ka body wings ke boka ntombi le faith barutse le khethi di ringa mo ah za ke barori ntombi faith welcome to mzanzi insider i'm excited about this because you guys are pilots right and the minute i found out i got excited and i'm imagining that everybody has that same reaction when you tell them about the job that you do, it's never like, oh, okay, sure, no, I'm okay. It's always just like, what? Right? Yeah. It is always, they always get the reaction. So tell me about working in this male-dominated uh, job. I think what's most important is the passion with it. So your passion for aviation, you bypass seeing that it's male-dominated. I only realized that it was male-dominated once I was in it, like, okay. Oh, really? I'm the only flower or the rose among the thorns, the thorns yeah. yeah. With it, but then it's cool. Take me through the test. What is the test to get your flying learners, basically? There's no test. What, so what do you do to get it? They, was it, a, yeah, there was a there test. Is, Can yeah. you tell the me, difference, To get your SPL, you, okay, initially, as for example, if I'm sitting in an aircraft, she's my instructor, I'm the student. Okay. She teaches me everything. Then the day she feels that I am confident to go in the air, so for the first time I go in the air as a student alone. When I come back, I get my first bar, which is my student pilot, meaning, hey, I've been in the air alone without assistance or correction from my instructor. Oh. Yes. Okay, so now you take me to the next stage? Okay, then the next stage is when you get your two bars. Um, that's when you have a PPL. Okay. So now you're allowed to fly with your friends, you're allowed to fly with your family, no instructor, you can go anywhere. So basically you are licensed to fly, you've got your license, you're licensed, you get your brown book, it's um, CAA approved, you can fly, but you can't do it for money. So you can't do it commercially. Okay. And then you get the last stage, no, it's not the last stage, you get the third stage, which is a commercial pilot license, which you get three buzz like Faith and myself. Okay. So there you can then get a job in an airline or a charter, but you can do it for for money. a lot of money, which is very mm, male dominated. Yeah, so, very, as ladies, yeah. do you ever feel like Mele who's in the umti that I'm going to fit in with them, kind of get into their mindset? Initially, yes, but then Mira, eventually I just thought, you know, they need a different perspective because, you know, we, mm. we're more careful, we're more. Um, we think about things, we think things through, uh, unlike the male uh, counterparts of Fortina, because most of them, I don't want to sound like they are cowboys or anything, sure. but males are males. We, yeah. we bring that um, sense in the cockpit, I feel. Really? You know, oh. So I think it's just that balance sometimes that's needed. It's like being um, 
uh, just uh, filling up for the next person, whatever they're not thinking you are there. So I think it's just the difference in thought. All right, and yeah. you've do you ever feel yourself who compensates a much? I think to some extent you do too. So that as a female being in this industry, you have to prove yourself. In order to be recognized as well, you, you have to put, the, put in that extra effort to be equal to the guys who are all already dominating this industry. So I believe as a female pilot, you have to just put in that extra effort mm. and to be recognized as not, oh, she's just pretty face. All right. Now, have you ever had instances where you felt Uguti being a lady worked against you in the job? Yes, I did. When I, mean, being a lady and being my weight, you know, it was, they would just look at you and think, you really think you can handle this mm. machine. And other people would voice it. Some people think it, they don't say it. Some people, wow. they say it. You know, it, it, it was a challenge, but I think coming out of the training and everything with your three bars, you mm. just get out a tough person. You know, you get out, when you start flying in the line and everything, you've been through all of sure. these mm. skeptics and you've proved yourself. You do have to work harder most of the time than the guys because the people don't believe in you and you have to believe in yourself. And we were lucky to have trained together. So it was a group of us. So we okay. were each other's support structure. And most of us, we, we, the hell, we were male, it was females and males, but it just all gelled in eventually. So you end. ended up working it out. Faith, did you ever feel like being a female is working against you? Yes, initially, like obviously seeing guys go fly, they yeah. obviously, they take their, their bags and go, you as a female, you think, oh, I'm still short, You're carrying cushions on top of the bag. Yeah. And they're like, how long are you gonna fly with cushions? Mm. But eventually you get used to it. A lot of people use cushions and it's perfectly fine. So, so you found yourself a bit intimidated, yes. right? Has, the, has it ever happened that um, people have said, no, nope, I don't want to fly in this plane that is driven by a woman? <laughs> Good time. So, see, so really, has it? It happens a lot, yeah. It happens because people think we can't drive, we can't park, we can't reverse. So they're exactly. thinking, do you really think you can fly? Mm. But yeah, it's done, guys. It's, I think people must just change their mindset and support. Exactly. All right. Do you guys feel like um, it actually is changing from being male-dominated into just being a more equally sexed industry? Very slowly. Very slowly. Yes, from yeah. back then and seeing now, I think it's still transgression and it's a process, eventually it will be 100%. Okay, now let's give all the young girls out there who want to be pilots some advice. I know y'all got some advice because you've been <laughs> through it all. So, must what kind of advice that man? My advice is basically to, you must research what you want to do and then you must arm yourself. By the time you get to that flight school and they think you don't know, you must just come there and you tell them, this is what I know, this is what I want to fly one day. And then the day you get to fly that, you go back to that school to whoever said to you, but who do you think you are? Nice. And you show Prove them. them wrong. You show them. Absolutely. So knowledge is power. Right? Exactly. I, I think based on Dombies as well, I think the mind, your thought, obviously it's a, it's, it is male dominated. They all tell you that you can't fly. What are you doing in a cockpit? It mm. is a cockpit, not a female pit. Oh, yeah? So what are you doing here? <laughs> so change your mind, your perspective, focus on the goalpost. Obviously, like in a soccer match, the, you're playing soccer, there will be fans who will boo you. But if you focus on the goalpost at all times, you will make it. Well, thank you so much for joining us, guys. Uh, you definitely schooled us, and I know a lot more, and I can officially say I know two female pilots <laughs> out here with it. <laughs> now, do remember that if you want to be part of the office, all you have to do is hit us up. All the details at the bottom of the screen, and we can upgrade you. It's time for us to take a quick ad break. Sabuya, don't you move. As she tells us her story and how come she's such a confident, strong young lady. It got to a point where I had to take a decision of whether to amputate or not because now Abba Zalbayala, they're like, no, she can't do that. Keep the channel locked on Mzazi Insider. You know what it is, Mzazi Insider. Disability is the inability to do something, and that's a statement that some have chosen to ignore because it's all about their ability. In today's Triumph Story, we meet a sister who's standing positively against adversity. I'm 23 years old, I'm I'm doing my third year in journalism, a life coach, of which is I tell people my story and see if people relate, but basically I believe Uguti 
behind everyone there is a story. So behind my story, the story circle, which relates to my story in a way. Hanta Holo, but what you don't know is that she has one leg. Yes, you heard right. One leg. Welcome, Bogi. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for having me. It's great to have you here, and we want to start right where it all began. Uh, tell us, um, I was 13. I was in grade 6. Uh, yeah, I was a kid, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, but I was actually young and at mind, when it got to a point where I had to take a decision of whether to amputate or not, because now Abba Zalbaya, they're like, no, she can't do that. Mm -hmm. we, we can't sign the consent form. So I had to push the doctors, rather than the pain I'm facing right now, can we just try, at least die trying, because now it's mm -hmm. cancer. It's, it's going up and we have to make a decision. So then I, I, I actually pushed the doctor and said, can I, can I just get over this? Can wow. I die trying? And then that's about it. So basically, that's where it all started. But you never about cancer and tell you think about who? No, cancer, I tell you, it's been, it's been 10 years. Like, wow. this is my 10th year. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yes. And, sh and it will not come back. It will that's not. Amazing. It will not come back. It was supposed to come back after five years. And I was just waiting for it. Wow. And I, I guess it was just faith. Would say it didn't come back. And I was That's like, right. well, then I should be an example to some people. Yeah. That's why I chose, would say, I'm going to take such decisions, yeah. like not wearing an artificial leg, rather, yeah. to come into the public and be who I am mm -hmm. and yeah. show people that there is better, mm. there is there is more to life than just worrying about what you don't have. Confidence is okay. Yeah. That's what and I want to get. I don't know. Honestly, I do not know. I always tell people, they ask me, how do you do it? I'm like, at times I go to bed and I break down, not mm -hmm. because people are on my case, you know, and everything. I'm just like, where does all this come from? Mm -hmm. Like, why am I this person? Why am I so confident? But I guess at the end of the day, it's just prayer. Mm -hmm. I'm wow. a person who's, who Mewaka taught me, Hori, through everything, just say, mm. I, will, I will get over things, you know? Yeah. So this is who I am today. I'm a relaxed person. No matter how hard things are, I'm just on some, I'm gonna be positive. I'm gonna let go of, of some other things. And yeah, that's the confidence. That's why so, I'm confidence driven. Yeah. Now why is it uh, that you took the decision to be by yourself yeah. through it all? Why did you decide through it all? <sighs> I guess I guess it's it's a matter of it's my life, not anyone else. Yes, I have parents, Abba Zalbami, they are there to guide me, but at the end of the day, they will, they will ha they have their own problems and everyone else in Biloyab. So I was just like, let me live my life. Bazu understand Abazal, you know. Mm. Like now I feel like they understand because to tell you the truth, if if they took the decision, you would say I get amputated. I feel like at a later stage when I reach 21, I'll be like, why did you guys allow this? Why didn't you guys just mm. let me be? I would have mm. died. Mm. Now I'm this person. Now I'm different from the other girls, you understand? So since it was me, I'm like, let me just be who I want to be, rather, you know? But what, what did you exactly, actually do? Yeah. That's what I want to do. What I want to understand. When saying handling or we want, would we love or now I do elsewhere? How did you actually create the separation? Um, when I was in metric, I joined a Cancer Relay. I walked more than 20 rounds and Isaac Stale go ground home. That's when, I, like, I could tell you that the whole night, I was like, I'm getting over being somebody else. I'm gonna be me, I'm getting over it. And wow. thereafter, I actually won an award, yeah, the best uh, cancer survivor and dedicated worker of yeah. the night, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was like, I can do better. But one person that I know that you actually are, is a fashionista. You told me that you are into stills, modeling. Me and you, we're actually the same. Do you know me and her, we're vibing. I was telling her that I follow her on Instagram. She doesn't follow me back, but it's okay. Yeah, it's we, okay. Know, we know people <laughs> like you, the celebrity type. No. So tell me about your love for fashion. Uh, my love for fashion, I've always been a fashion girl. Yeah. That's what I don't think. And I'm then I'm going born. Like, <laughs> 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 and how it's what I mean. Yes. So um, I'm representing myself on the other side. I've come to a point where on my Facebook I've realized sorry, I get people who inbox me. Barry, how do you take full pictures of yourself? Where, where else people in disability are catfishing, they hiding mm. behind images mm. and everything. Yeah. I'm like, but I wanna represent me. So through all those questions, I was like, I'm actually a person or 
fashion. So let me come up to people and not represent me as a cancer survivor, but someone is I it's an alling fashionable and out there, you know? Yeah. yeah. So now I don't get a question of how did you lose a leg on my on my Facebook, but wow, Utina Handley, this mm. and that. I'm, I'm I'm making people become positive rather than negative. Yeah, just focusing on you the negative, yeah. So with fashion, I guess skin skin talk it's 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 where I wanna be. But um thing is I'm not even a fashion designer, but yeah. I love fashion. <laughs> Like a boss. Full tank. Who did you Like it said, like I get to make a ring. Ask you seeing clean guys like hi, Kupasorello. Absolutely. Very inspirational, Bongi. I must you. tell you, so This is a woman's confidence. Her head, her crown. Yes, yes. This her is my crown. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with us. You look fantastic, yes. by the way, wow. and thank you for sharing your story with us. You definitely you. must be inspiring a whole lot of young people out there. Right now, though, it is time for us to take a quick ad break. Siabuya ni ngai dao. Tetsi. Keep the channel locked on Mzazi Insider. You know what it is. Insider. Welcome back, everybody. In Zulu Tulu Ramana Homzanti Insider. Now, we feature a very quirky business, Bonabatwala Eli Black Olive, and Reduce Eli, the owner. And Diana, she goes by the name of Leah. How you What's doing? What's happening? Hey, guys. Look, Reduce now, all fun. the insiders have to get in on what oh. we've been speaking about, right? Yes, right. Wake, pray, slay. slay. Uh huh. Every, every day. day. Ow! Done. Wake, pray, slay every, every day. day. And that explains your outfit. You look Slaying, amazing. Slaying, like you, uh, the pressure out here. OK, I'm going to make you some tea in a bit. How many sugars do you want? No sugar. Sugar is bad for you. OK. Me. Just I'll a dash of honey. honey. Oh, wow. Cool. I was speak. just about to say three teaspoons of sugar. But nonetheless, <laughs> now nah, I'm taking that back. Let's go straight into it. Let's speak, let's speak black olive. Tell us about the inception. When did it start? Black olive started actually way back in 2012. Yeah. Black Olive is more than just a traditional weddings and events company. Okay. We are in the business of creating unforgettable memories through exceptional experience. So, what do we do? We create a full end-to-end -end value venting chain for our, for, for our clients, cool. whether it's corporates or whether it's the private um, individuals that are looking to do a high tea, a couture baby shower, mm. a bespoke bridal shower. Nice. We do all those kind of events across the entire spectrum. What are some of the challenges that yeah. you face with yeah. your business? Yeah. Look, I'm a very open person when it comes to being an entrepreneur and a fempreneur. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, in my industry especially, being a black female-owned business owner in an events um, industry, it's been exceptionally tough for me to break entry. Let's be honest, it's been a very traditionally white-orientated and white-dominated market. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as an example, last year, I was asked to do the Top Vendor Wedding Awards, yeah. which came to Johannesburg for the first time. It's always only been, been done in Cape Town. I project managed it, I did the venue, I did the event design, the whole look and feel for the awards. Nice. I was the only black person there. Wow. Okay. In all categories. So whether it's photography, whether it's decor and design, yeah. whether it's stationery, all the contestants yeah. were, were all white. Mm. I want to ask you this. Yeah. Obviously, those are obvious challenges that I think are not just for this industry that you're yeah. in. It's across the board. And many other challenges I'm, I'm sure that you face. Suppliers, Absolutely. you know, meeting the demands, time, yeah. deadlines. What's your driving force to still stay in an industry? There's all sorts of things. People don't have money anymore to right. do, like, nice, lavish yeah. gatherings or yeah. events. Yeah. How, how do you continue? How do you, what pushes you? Yeah. Well, I must tell you, um, Rory, we have managed to double our annual turnover by 400% since 2012. Come numbers. on now. So for us to have been able to do that in a time where we're speaking about recession, mm. where we're speaking about taxes increasing, mm. where we're rates, speaking about yeah. inflation, all those kind of things are realities. But there's certain industries that no matter what the economy is going through, people are still going to spend money. Yeah. Don't go and do something where there's only a niche for it right now. Mm. Yeah. And within the next couple of months or the It'll next year, over. that demand has, has, has fizzled out. Yeah. What are you going to do then? Don't follow the hype. Don't True. follow the hype. Yeah. Look for an industry that you know is going to sustain itself even through tough economic and recession times. Now, speaking about so, sustainable businesses, yours is definitely one. Where do you see yourself growing to in the next five years? Very exciting question for us because we're actually in the process of looking for a brand new function venue. I'm not sure if I mentioned before, we do have a very small boutique function venue okay. that's situated on the North Cliff Ridge mountain range. 
It's small, it's intimate, it's your home away from home feel. People are tired of going to the big Mulder's Drift opulent uh, function venues. They're tired of going to the hotels. Many people don't want to go sit in a restaurant, having to sit and mix and mingle with 50 other people. They come to the Olive Lounge, which is a part of our brand. Nice. And they come and enjoy a wonderfully relaxing environment with 180 degree views of Johannesburg. Absolutely wow. fantastic. So you'll be saving on the, uh, the venue hire as well, so they can just get their venue from you guys. Well, we do that. That's why we call ourselves a full end-to-end -end eventing solutions provider. Mm. From venue, from food, to decor, to entertainment, and everything else in between, we are prepared and ready to plug ourselves smart in. Smart planning, Fantastic. smart businessing, smart having a business. Black <laughs> yes. Olive. That probably Living. doesn't Thank make Thank you so much for English. joining us. We learned quite a bit from you. Right now, it is time for us to get into the music. Remember, you can request a music video simply by sending us a voice note. Somebody did it, and their video is coming up right now. Insider. You know what it is, it's the insider. Who tips the to help us out, who is the author of this awesome book that I've started reading just a couple of days ago. It's called The Goddess Mojo Bootcamp. Now, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Thank I'm you so much for joining us. Hey, I'm going to be like... Oh, bright, <laughs> like, you could fit in so nicely. <laughs> so nicely, you got the memo. Uh, but we're hanging out about the Goddess uh, Boot Camp. Yes, that's Ealing a bestseller. Congratulations yeah. for that, first Thank of all. You. Let's yeah. just, in a world where people think people don't read, yes. to have a bestseller is obviously a great thing. How do you buka a Mojo? I guess mm. that's the addition to yes. it. What, is, what does Mojo mean in the context of this book? In the context of this book, mojo means you attract a factor. Literally, the, the part of you that attracts mm -hmm. things and people to you. Because it's a book about relationships, it's a part of you attract that yeah. you want to know in the biblical way. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, but that's essentially to attract a factor, the part of you that magnetizes things to yeah. you. Yeah. It takes two to tango, all sorts of things, where relationships, it takes two to work. And you're kind of sort of dispelling that. I know you're not completely taking out that notion, but you're saying, what do you mean by that? It starts and ends with you when it comes to relationships. You know, in, in the book, I speak very early on about um, the purpose of relationships and mm -hmm. how relationships work. And, and I say that a very big part of what relationships do to, for you is that they mirror you. So mm -hmm. often in a relationship, what you experience is yourself, your thoughts, the habits of how, your fears and all of those things, mm -hmm. as opposed to what's really happening with the other person. I'll give you an example. Say you and I, in a relation, we're both in relationships. Rudy, we were waiting for our guys, Baladets, you know. Mm -hmm. And because of my history, Kifilaure, my guy is late because he's inconsiderate and doesn't really care about mm. me. And I knew that sooner or later, mm. and you thinking, oh, sure, my guy is late because he's probably I stuck wonder, in guy. traffic. Oh, it, it's simply yeah. like he's probably stuck in traffic. Same scenario, same situation, but how I interpret it. Mm. I bring myself, my issues, my history, my past into it. So when you think about it, more often than not, you're not really having a relationship with a person, you're mm. using a person to have a relationship with yourself. Yeah. Yeah, because you project. Yeah. 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 Mm. Another thing, always Hwarang Huyona Bukeng and I give femininity, which is something that, I mean, there's a notion out there where we need to play it down. Like, how does it come into play? It's actually a very big part of the book because, um, First of all, the complement of femininity is masculinity, right? Yeah. And and in any entity, and, and I say entity because it's not just living things, but even an organization where yeah. business, you know, there's a feminine aspect and a masculine aspect. Yeah. Um, and they need to be in balance for anything to be healthy. And generally, because we are in a society that is very patriarchal by nature, yeah. The, the things that we associate with, with femininity tend to be, we think it's weak, we think it's frivolous, yeah. we think being feminine is about hoba. There's this. So, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's that word, yes. submissive. 
stood there and looked pretty, mm. you know, big, ornamenting, and, and on the other hand, the things we associate with masculinity is you're strong, power, you are assertive, mm. and, and it's a pity because both of those have, ha, have value and they need to, to work together for someone to be balanced. And your attractiveness is feminine by nature. Oh, okay. You know, so whether you're male or female, when you attract things to you, you're coming from your from a feminine space. We've got a young lady who's not quite sure where her mojo is sitting at, mm -hmm. and uh, this mm -hmm. is her story. How mm -hmm. and Kahiso will get to give her a couple of tools and tips that she can use. Hi, I'm Zanzi Insider. My name is Dumi, and I have a bit of a problem. Uh, I'm a bit of a feminist, and I'm afraid that that's why guys leave me. Please help. Let's go on home, Zanzi Insider. We're all about you, and we love hearing from you. So, tomorrow, we're going to have a lot of fun. And we thought, hey, man, who better to bring in than Kahisa Torotusa? So, to me, what is the problem? Kayo Mojo, you know, do you feel that you've got a problem attracting the right kind of people? The mojo is gone. <laughs> <laughs> I can't find it. Where Where you find it? <laughs> um, no, you know, I just I have a problem. I think that I'm a little bit too much of a feminist. And um, it sort of kind of takes the boys away, you know? Yeah. They find it appealing at first because it presents a challenge. And then as time goes by, they just really like put off by it. And like, they just no. think like, I'm a hard nut to crack and they're yeah. over it. So yeah, I basically can't keep a man. Is this the balance <laughs> you were talking about maybe? Um, the, the masculine and feminine, like... I don't know, I need to ask her. <laughs> <laughs> All okay. I know, she's a psycho chick. <laughs> 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 you go through people's phones. No, 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Can I say, before I get to you, Hori, this dispels this myth that people have that if you're attractive, like good looking in that sense, if you're physically good looking, yeah. like... Yeah, why all it? And, and look at her. Look at She's her. She's gorgeous. You know, clearly, that's not enough. <laughs> no, no, it's really not. It's really okay, not. Okay, so what, what, what do you need, I guess, then? But what you I, have they told you, Barry? Were you too hard or whatever? Or is that the conclusion that you've drawn? I think the conclusion that I've drawn is that I'm a little bit, you know, um, hard mm -hmm. um, to love. But I think that for them, they just think that I'm a little bit like emotionally unavailable and just I come across as cold because I have all this like feminine views of, of things and points that I don't allow a man to be a man. You know, yeah, actually, I'm assuming that you go into a relationship with men because you want to experience that masculinity, like, no. Yeah, why, why do you go in? Just because I like him, <laughs> you know. Like, I, I but isn't that part of it though? Yeah, that, that because is. I like when, him. Do you do you have relationships with women you like? No. Rom rom exactly. That's my I point. You go into a romantic <laughs> relationship with a man because you want to experience that masculine energy, right? Yeah. And everything has rules that 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 governs it. And energy, masculine energy, is attracted by need. Mm. Generally, and I, I don't want to say men, because not all men are masculine, mm. right? Just as much as not all women are feminine, mm. and maybe you have a lot of masculine energy. Mm -hmm. And and essentially what happens is that a, a, a highly masculine person attracts a highly feminine person. Think about it. Often, when you look at those guys, you know those guys with the muscles? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay, it's a very bad example of masculinity, but they are quite... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have yeah. you noticed that generally, the women are in, on the extreme side of feminine? They're like very, very... Kidi Kidi you know, and true. then they have the heels and they walk mm. like this. Be, because <laughs> it's, it's in that extreme. The more yeah. masculine he is, the more feminine she I attract the metros. to be. Yes, yeah. <laughs> because you probably have a lot of masculine energy and a little bit of mm. feminine elebona that's sort of in the middle. Very you know? true, yeah. yeah. That's and crazy. I know. I actually never thought of it like that. Yeah. That's absolutely yeah. bizarre. Let's talk about the book. Let's yeah. come back to the book, uh, The Boot Camp. What I love about the book, and like I said, I've just started, I think I'm on my, it's not chapters, it's sessions, just by yeah. the way. Uh, I'm on my <laughs> third session. And what I love about it, it's probably one of, because relationship books, step one, two, three, this feels more interactive, like I'm having a conversation yeah. with you. Yeah. So the boot camp element of the book is obviously stuff that I need to do or think about or review um, with myself. How can the book, 
help someone like like Dumi in, 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 in her journey. Essentially what I've done is that I've, I've divided the book in a very, very useful way into four yeah. issues, right, that, that it deals with. Issue number one, why can't I get a man? Issue number two, why do I attract men who suck? When I get to you, just raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> number three, why does he keep on doing that? Because mm. sometimes you are in a relationship mm. and you have the same problem over and over again or you, you, you seem to go out mm. with the same jerk over and over okay. again. Yeah. And the last one is why am I acting crazy? Because sometimes you get in, We are you, crazy sometimes. And then you morph into this person. Either you're uh, very jealous or you like, or you just get you weird. You go through their phones you know, and you're like, yeah. I see you. Where were you last night? Or okay. you befriend the mom before he introduces you. Mm, okay. <laughs> that, please don't do that. Please don't do that. Unfortunately, don't do we have run out of time. This is, this is fruitful, but I know you probably still have more questions for her. Yeah. So we're going to give you a copy of the book. Yeah. And uh, we hope that you get to do some of the exercises in here and that, um, you know, you really get to learn and find your mojo and know how to use your mojo correctly. Thank you so much for coming to hang Thank with you. us. I'm loving the book. Get off Huna Lakili at the end because Huna Lakili Suklangayona, but we'll talk about that. <laughs> right now, though, it's time for us to hang out with some music. Check this out. Harra Khuta Rutsola Pelimona Humzansi Insara. I'm on that Malay vibe. What? She got her voices warm. Like, she got me warm. Like, I just felt warm inside. What was your favorite moment of the show? Absolutely, Malay, top of my list. She top opened list. up on a high note, whispering yeah. sweet somethings. But like, Black Olive, though? She what did she said, say? wake, pray, slay, every, every day. day. And we had the angels come through, pilots. First time I've uh, ever seen female pilots really? in my life. Now you know too. Yeah, Boom. my girls. Come on, and last but not least, Bongi, yo, all the way from the vault to Durban, doing her thing, absolutely and beautiful. And she brought the slaves. She's got such a contagious, like, nice energy. Dude. I absolutely love it. Kitete, I'm still saying it there. Kitete. That's all I'm saying. Mm. Well, unfortunately, this is where we have to wrap it up. Konalagum Zanzi Insider, we're shutting it down. Do remember that we are going to bring you the realest of breakfast right here on SABC One. I'm Zanzi yeah. for shizzle. For now, though, it's time for us to head out. Yeah, we are the new age, the slay age. Peace.